Conservation of Energy for Non-Conservative Systems. Taking a look at conservation of energy for conservative systems and remembering our equation for it first though, the total energy in a closed and isolated system will remain constant. So the total energy was made up of potential and kinetic energy and those just sloshed back and forth, uh, but the total energy always remained the same. And so here's a bouncing ball. We can see that uh, it doesn't keep bouncing forever. It kind of dies down and stops bouncing. So all of the potential doesn't bounce and come back into all the potential. Some of the energy is going outside of the system and also some of the energy is going inside the system internally. So what's happening here is it's bouncing. I'll pause for a minute and explain it. What's happening when it's bouncing is the ball is vibrating and so there's thermal kinetic energy uh, that's building up in the ball. The uh, ball is actually getting warmer and also the floor is being hit and vibrated. So the molecules in the floor um, are absorbing some of the kinetic energy and the kinetic energy is being displaced. That's called non-conservative work. So work is going outside the system. That WNC that we're going to see is a non-conservative uh, energy that's going outside of the system with just the ball. And that kinetic energy and potential energy now is going again into thermal kinetic energy in the ball and non-conservative work or heating outside the ball. Oh! Let's check out a tomato. Boom! <laughs> The tomato hit and just bounced a little bit. So when a tomato hits, it's not very elastic, is what we say. Therefore, uh, not a lot of energy recoils and goes back into potential energy. Most of the energy goes into uh, thermal energy inside the tomato, which is still inside the system. But then a lot of the energy also uh, hits and goes into the floor, which is non-conservative heating. To understand this bouncing ball and the idea of thermal energy, we have to go back and give credit to James Prescott Joule, who all of energy and work is uh, named after, the unit is named after. He did a very famous paddle wheel experiment. These are paddle wheels. And what he did is he wound up a weight on a uh, string around this pulley. So he wound it up and then when the pulley was released, the potential energy of the mass right here uh, would turn into kinetic energy and that kinetic energy would spin these paddle wheels. And he noticed that when the paddle wheel spun as this was falling, the temperature of the water and the fluid that the paddle wheels were uh, agitating, the temperature would rise so slightly. So he found out there was thermal energy. The motion of the paddle wheels actually vibrated the molecules in the liquid and, and caused the temperature to increase. Therefore, he discovered this idea of thermal energy and heat. And those are the missing parts that we're going to explore now. So now let's take a look at conservation of energy when we have non-conservative and open systems. So our equation, E equals U plus K, uh, has some other parts that we need to include. Uh, so total energy still will remain constant, but how we account for that total energy uh, needs some other terms uh, and explanation. So we start with the potential energy, uh, talking about the bouncing ball and uh, the kinetic energy that it has when it builds, when it falls, and then hits. But when it hits, uh, some of it turned into thermal kinetic energy, and uh, some of it turned into translational kinetic energy, and it starts to bounce up. Some of it turned into rotational energy, because when it bounces up, it starts spinning slightly. And then some of it went outside the system, and that's what non-conservative work is. It's heating, uh, and any, any other work that it does on the outside environment. So let's look at our uh, conservation of energy model here for non-conservative systems and apply it to the bouncing ball. Uh, in this illustration, it's laid out so that we can kind of visualize the bouncing ball even though it was bouncing straight up and down. We kind of laid it out in time here a little. A little. So to start off with, it's pretty easy to see that the total energy in the system is all potential energy because we've raised this ball with a particular mass 
up in a gravitational field a particular height, and so all of the energy is potential. Then as it falls, it gains speed, and so all of this potential energy translates into kinetic energy the instant before it bounces. And so this part was like our conservatives model um, before the ball hit. Now that the ball hits and recoils, two, a couple of things are happening. When the ball hits, the molecules inside the ball are, are vibrating, so we have thermal kinetic energy that we have to add in our system that really took away from the translational kinetic, kinetic energy we started with. So some of it went into thermal kinetic energy of, of the ball's uh, molecules vibrating. And then some of it also went into the floor and vibrated into molecules in the floor. And that's what we call non-conservative work. And specifically in this case, it would be heating. Uh, but also moved air molecules, and that's why you can hear the ball bouncing. So we lump all of that external, outside the system, uh, vibrations and energy into this idea of non-conservative work. And so this is, these are the two reasons why the ball doesn't bounce as high, the loss of height. Now the ball recoils with its elasticity, and uh, some of the energy, uh, because of the, the, the uh, compression of the ball, is doing work elastic work on the ball, and then that elastic work springs back and turns, and the elastic potential into the ball compressing springs back and turns into translational kinetic energy and the ball starts to go upward. But remember the molecules are vibrating and the floor is vibrating and sound was created, so this amount of potential energy and the elasticity of the ball isn't as much as this potential energy we started with, and therefore the ball doesn't translate as high and doesn't turn back into as much potential energy the next time around. And then of course this process just repeats itself. Notice that it kind of dies down with a curve like this, and that's because the amount of vibrations when it hits, since it's not hitting as hard, there's not as much going into thermal or into heating. We're not losing as much height each time because we're not vibrating the ball or the ground as much each subsequent bounce because it's not as violent as it was previously. So this explains, using our model for non-conservative systems, uh, why a ball bounces like it does. <laughs> that looked fun. Uh, rolling down a ramp. Uh, we have our ball here rolling down the ramp. And let's look at this system. Here is our non-conservative conservation of energy mathematical model. And using that, the total energy in the system initially was the potential energy of the ball. And, but then the ball starts rolling. When the ball started rolling, notice that it's translating. It's going down the ramp. It's also rotating. It's rotating and spinning, and, and that's a form of kinetic energy. And then also, it was kind of bouncing around a little bit. So the molecules in the ball actually started vibrating as well. And so there was some thermal energy uh, uh, developing within the uh, ball itself. And then finally, the ball was kind of bouncing and jostling on the ramp. And so there was some heating of the ramp. The molecules in the ramp were being jostled. Not only that, there was a pretty big uh, ball rolling down, and so it had to push air out of the way. So some of the air molecules got moved too, and that would be lumped in this non-conservative work part as well. So again, looking at our model, uh, that this is the vibrations in a ramp, and we really should put that it's also in the air, and this thermal uh, part is the vibrations in the ball, and of course the obvious ones are the translation and rotation of the ball. But the total energy remains the same. It's just going to different parts. That looked cool. I'd love to have one of those little miniature uh, model roller coasters. 
Uh, let's take a look at that model roller coaster because it uh, is very much like a, a real one as far as uh, the energy is concerned concerned in the system and conservation of energy says that the total energy will remain the same. All of these parts can vary and change, but when you add them all up, they end up equaling the total energy you first put in. So to first put in energy in this roller coaster, we did work, or I should say the little uh, electric motor here with the belt, the conveyor belt, did work to raise that miniature roller coaster up to the top hill. So that work gave the system its initial energy and then once it was released from here then the energy just played around with these various parts it started off with all gravitational potential energy mgh the very top and then it converted into all these various forms the rest of the way so as it uh, started to go down the hill the potential was turning into kinetic so we had still some gravitational potential but then the kinetic was actually made up of a couple of different uh, parts. There is translational kinetic energy, that's the linear movement of the car, and then there was also the rotation of the wheels, and you could hear the wheels rotating. But there was also thermal energy uh, that was going into the vibration of the wheels and the car, and you could hear that as well. You could hear the air molecules moving as it went down. It was pushing air molecules, and the vibrations in the wheels and track were also causing sound and air movement. Um, and then finally, the track and air vibrating is uh, this non-conservative work. That's why the, uh, the two reasons why the roller coaster, the next hill on the roller coaster, always has to be lower than the previous hill is because of these two terms, the thermal energy that's going in internally into the car uh, and also the non-conservative work that's being done to the outside environment with the track vibrating in the air moving, um, that energy is not recoverable and uh, therefore the next hill has to be lower. Of course the car is also moving at this point too, so it has some kinetic energy that it didn't have up here. So there's a little bit of energy uh, that's used in these two areas or goes into these two areas and a little bit into kinetic energy and then of course this has potential energy here as well. Regardless, it doesn't matter where you look at this car on the track, if you added up all these little pieces of energy, it would equal the same amount of energy that the car had initially because of the work that was originally done. So, of course, I wanted to come back and uh, visit Dan one more time. Before, when uh, we were watching Dan, we had a conservative system for the first part of this where the total energy was potential and kinetic. So as the potential died down, the kinetic built up and built up and built up as potential was dying down. And we had a conservative system. The total energy remained the same. And it was just going from potential to kinetic. But then we didn't know what happened once it hit but now we do know what happened once it hit Dan's foot with our non-conservative model of conservation of energy. The total energy still stayed the same, but now there was thermal energy in the bowling ball. The molecules of the bowling ball are vibrating a little bit, but what's vibrating more is Dan's foot right here, and that is uh, the uh, thermal energy in Dan's foot because of heating uh, and also uh, the ball hit the floor and vibrated the floor and of course it wasn't a perfectly isolated system on the way down the bowling ball was moving air molecules out of its way so there would have been a little bit of that as well but of course in the universe there is a total amount of energy in the universe and that ener energy will never be different is what we uh, got when we had the Big Bang and it's been the same ever since. It just goes into different forms as it uh, sloshes around and does different stuff. Scratch's parting thought. 
and good luck on your quest for continuous improvement.